sit at the Telestrator and start to watch the pro models, the one thing that you should really start to focus on are the hips. And watch how all these pros have excellent hips, and that's really what distinguishes them between the recreational player. Too much angle early or late will cost us power and consistency. The point of contact with the ball, depending on the pitch location, will be even with or slightly ahead of the front of the body. Match a little more closely that angle that the pitch is coming down. That way when we adjust our upper body and the swing path angle, whether we're aiming at the top of the ball or the bottom of the ball for top spin or under spin, we'll be able to match up that plane a little bit more closely. You'll we will need to trigger the swing. We do so by pushing and extending our top arm as explosively as we can, aiming at the part of the ball we wish to attack. This action will push and snap the bat head from lag back to impact with the ball. The lead wrist will hinge, becoming a pivot point. This creates a second pendulum of rotation. Since the lead arm is continuing to be pulled forward and away in an arc, it's absolutely key for the extension and push of the top arm to be done as quickly as humanly possible. This is why this becomes our main focus in part three, trying to catch up and deliver a powerful snap to impact. You're gonna find that that happens in just a fraction of a second. And all you have time for is really one thing to focus on. Uh, when you come down with the front foot and the rotation starts, we found through our research that the best thing you can do is to push and extend the top arm. And we find that it's easy to aim and push and extend the bat head with the top arm. It's very easy to aim at the top or bottom of the ball. And people say, well, that's a pretty accurate stroke, isn't it? If you think about it in those terms, yes, but what you're really doing is changing your swing angle. And when you get into that lost position, then you start to aim and push and extend. If I aim at the bottom of a ball that's, say, chest high, my swing angle is going to be pretty much parallel to the ground, okay? So that's a zero angle. If I aim at the top of the ball and try to hit top spin, I'm going to push to here. And you can see the swing angle is going to change maybe this much. That's probably 30 degrees off of what a level swing is aiming at the bottom. So can you change your swing angle 30 degrees? Absolutely, that's not very hard to do. If you're serious about improving your hitting, then you need to understand the swing mechanics and how they can be broken down into drillable parts, which is what we just presented to you. It's surprising that in softball, very few players actually do drills. And so in order to get that new proper muscle memory or to correct flawed muscle memory, you need to be able to do a basic short function drills that'll improve your swing. New skills are learned by doing short duration, but consistent drilling. Each one of these drills focuses on an individual part of the total swing. But it's really a great drill because it ties your top hand, your rear shoulder, and your rear hip together as you push and extend the top hand and explode through the ball. You can really feel the tying of everything together and the force of the rear hip driving the bat head. It's really important for your pitcher to give you practice hitting all kinds of different types of pitches, so a low pitch, outside, inside, or a high pitch, and you can also use that as an opportunity to aim for the lower half as well as the top half of the ball. I'm going to try and hit the top of the ball to get top spin on it. Now I'm going to hit a ball with underspin. One of Bogey's favorites is the slide tube. When we cut a short piece of PVC pipe and smooth the ends and add this to our guide rope, we now have a tool we call the slide tube. Add an extra bungee cord to the end and make the rope longer so you have room to adjust the length. This enhances the daily drills by giving resistance and providing a great simulation of the actual swing mechanics. It provides a tremendously satisfying feeling of the hip snapping open and the strong extension and oversnap. Visualize and snap the bat head to impact with the ball. Thus, a concrete point of contact is established and ingrained. You can change the height of the slide tube rope and visualize hitting thigh, waist, or chest high pitches. And you can move your point of contact so you can hit outside or inside the correct angle and pushing and extending the top arm to oversnap the bat head through the ball. You can practice. It forces the hitter to rotate faster and extend even quicker to catch up with the ball. Relax body rotation. One of the most important things in BP is getting your pitch and not chasing pitches out of the zone. And if you want to go backside, 
you can either back away from the plate a little bit or you can stay in your normal stance and just let the pitch get back into you more or look for a more outside pitch where it's easier to go that way. And during a game, I don't have a lot of finesse to go that way, but if I see they have a spot open for me or a gap open where I can take advantage of it, I'll either shift my feet a little bit or I'll just wait for an outside pitch or a pitch to get back into me a little bit more. And I'll use my same mechanics, but just drive it to the opposite field. This brings good mechanics. Some flaws are so stubborn that they need isolated attention. And flaws basically fall into three groups. We see this when the front shoulder and the upper body chase forward and down. It breaks that straight line back body angle and the results are slower rotation. You don't let the rotation bring it around. Secondly, the brace leg drill is one of the best. Basically, you can lean back against that front leg and get the feeling of your body rotating and opening. We've had the honor of working with a lot of players nationally on their swings and let's take a practical look at some of the before and after success stories and what they did to correct their flaws. Stay back in the rear leg just long enough to correct her lunge. The biggest thing that for me is timing and definitely that little bit of a wind up and using it to put more power behind my swing definitely helps, so timing. Basically, what I'm trying to do is get as much weight on my back leg as I can. Then it levels my swing out so that when I do make good contact, I'm hitting a really good line drive. If you had a swing two years ago, it was evident he was all front side pull. And the loss of the mobility in his legs after knee surgery basically left him with less hip rotation and very little top hand push and extension. On the pre swing, since it's a slower pace motion, it should feel significant because you're much more aware of feeling the movement over a long period of time. So it's perfect for analyzing the pitch as you sit back and you wind in time. But conversely, as you progress to the ba-boom, bang, it's over. We should have covered a lot of ground in such a short period of time that the ba-boom should mentally feel smaller and quicker. So mentally control the pre-swing and instinctively react on the swing itself. Tell everybody when you prepare yourself is to come through, make sure you get the extension, and just follow through with your body. When my plane, my hands start high. When I load and go back, they actually even get a little bit higher. And my plane is more of a just a real slight uppercut plane. The infielders or outfielders, if I execute, it doesn't matter that they know I'm way off the plate and that I'm thinking backside. At night, I, I thought that was a little too many, but... <laughs> you know, I, I quit the game uh, at probably an early age. Uh, at the... uh, my softball buddies keep hassling me because I can only play ball three days a week. However, I play hockey three days a week, uh, leaving me only one day to relax. Well, what else? Would you rather sit home with a recliner? Okay, go. Oh no, oh no, I can't sit there too long. <laughs> I gotta be doing something. Hey. Do something exciting. Seattle, Washington, and the town of Kent. The amazing Russell Road Complex and the unreachable roof of the Edge of the Field Cafe. Hitting and hosting the event is Art Bash Eversoul. We have five seniors from 53 to 71 that we think can reach the side of the ice rink, 360 to 390 feet away. Say hello to my little friend.